Greetings, fellow detectives. Wizard Kitten here, bringing you a new Nancy Drew analysis video. Today's video is brought to you by the patrons over at Mystique Manor and by all the official fellow detective channel members. If you too would like to become an official fellow detective and gain access to exclusive badges and emojis, then click join next to the subscribe button. Thank you for your continued support. With the holidays on the horizon, I've been thinking a lot about gifts. And so what, Wizard Kitten, you may be asking, what does that have to do with Nancy Drew? On the surface, absolutely nothing. But if you're like me, and you spend an abnormal amount of time thinking about the Nancy Drew games and all of the characters, then you may also come up with random questions like, I wonder what the Nancy Drew characters' love languages are. I wonder which ones have the love language of receiving gifts. No? Just me? <laughs> well, at least my brain happens to work this way, which means you all get another Nancy Drew analysis video. That's right, today we're going to be exploring the concept of the five love languages, and explaining each one through characters in the Nancy Drew series. Incredibly niche? Absolutely. Entertaining? Well, that's my goal. The Five Love Languages are a personality assessment popularized by Dr. Gary Chapman that works from the theory that people with different personalities prefer to give and receive love in different ways. This doesn't have to mean only romantic love, as understanding the love languages of your friends and family members can also be incredibly helpful in deepening your relationships. The original theory proposes that there are five different love languages. Receiving gifts, quality time, acts of service, words of affirmation, and physical touch. I'll be sure to link the website that I used as a resource throughout this video in the description box down below. Now the theory goes that we all have different percentages and proportions when it comes to which types of love we prefer to receive and which are less important. To illustrate this concept, you can take a quiz to determine what your primary love language is and to see the percentages of all of the other types. As you can see by my graph here, my primary love language is words of affirmation with 37%, followed by acts of service with 30%. At a distant third is physical touch with 13%, followed by quality time and receiving gifts bringing up the rear with 10% each. Your primary love language is the one that you find most important, the one that really makes your heart soar and makes you feel truly loved. So, what are the primary love languages of the Nancy Drew characters, and can we determine them? I think we absolutely can. Please note this video may contain mild plot spoilers. Let's start first with the inspiration of this video, receiving gifts. According to the Five Love Languages website, receiving gifts as a love language should not be mistaken for materialism. The receiver of gifts thrives on the love, thoughtfulness, and effort behind the gift. If you speak this language, the perfect gift or gesture shows that you are known, you are cared for, and you are prized above whatever was sacrificed to bring the gift to you. A missed birthday, anniversary, or a hasty, thoughtless gift would be disastrous. So would the absence of everyday gestures. Gifts are visual representations of love and are treasured greatly. In the Nancy Drew universe, this would translate into characters who feel excited at the idea of receiving gifts or who are thankful to Nancy when they receive something from her. I believe that characters with the primary love language of receiving gifts include Margarita Foberg from The Phantom of Venice, Jenna Deblin from Danger on Deception Island, Jim Archer from Secret of the Old Clock, Jacques Brunet from Treasure in the Royal Tower, Manette from Danger by Design, Henry Bollet from Legend of the Crystal Skull, and Miwako Shimizu from Shadow at the Water's Edge. For some of these characters, the answer is quite obvious. Margarita Foberg, for example, specifically tells Nancy that she likes gifts and is very impressed with the high-end sunglasses that Nancy gives to her. Similarly, Miwako lights up every time she talks about how Rentoro gifted her Suki, 
and when he gifts her the collar, saying that the gifts are very sweet. Manette is impressed with Nancy when she is able to deliver exactly what she was hoping for. And Jenna reminisces fondly on the necklace that Hilda Swenson gave her, saying it's one of the most beautiful things she owns. For the other characters, we can tell that receiving gifts is their love language, because it is how they are expressing their love to others. Jacques makes hope boxes and wants to give his fiancée a precious engagement ring. Jim Archer wants to give his wife a nice dress that he thinks she deserves, and Henry is constantly trying to ease his girlfriend Summer by purchasing her all sorts of gifts. Very often, we express love to others in the way that we wish to receive it, which means that these three gentlemen likely hope to receive gifts in the same way that they give them. I think this trend is interesting because, to a certain extent, all of these characters seem to have an underlying desire to be understood by their loved ones, especially since they are probably frequently misunderstood by others around them. Receiving a meaningful gift that really suits them would show that the gift giver really understands them and knows what can make them happy. A thoughtful gift would make them feel cared for and like they are important, which is very sweet. Next, let's talk about quality time. According to the Five Love Languages website, in the vernacular of quality time, nothing says I love you like full, undivided attention. Being there for this type of person is critical, but really being there, with the TV off, fork and knife down, and all chores and tasks on standby, makes your significant other feel truly special and loved. Distractions, postponed dates, or the failure to listen can be especially hurtful. Quality time also means sharing quality conversation and quality activities. In the Nancy Drew universe, I think that this translates into characters who are frequently requesting time with Nancy, asking her to join them in something that they care about. I believe that this description matches up with Jane Penvalin from Curse of Blackmore Manor, Leela Yadav from Warnings at Waverly Academy, Taylor Sinclair from Secret of the Scarlet Hand, Tino Balducci from Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon, JJ Ling from Danger by Design, Bill Kessler from White Wolf of Icicle Creek, Dr. Gilbert Buford from Legend of the Crystal Skull, Yumi Shimisu from Shadow at the Water's Edge, and Deirdre Shannon from Alibi in Ashes. All of these characters directly ask for Nancy to spend time with them in a shared activity or actively engage in shared activities with other characters for long periods of time. Jane is always asking Nancy to play board games with her, and Leela is always pining for a game of darts or ice hockey. Taylor Sinclair and Tino Balducci both adamantly ask Nancy to speak with them. JJ Ling always wants Nancy to play a game of hangman, Bill will play fox and geese with people for hours, Dr. Buford is immediately ready to speak openly with Bess, Yumi hangs out with Bess and George all over Japan and feels snubbed when her own family doesn't appreciate her Ryokan visits, and Deirdre doesn't stop asking Ned to hang out with her. I see a trend here as well in that all of these characters really prioritize attention and consider gaining attention to be incredibly important. Several of them like to be the center of the spotlight, but even those who don't are extra willing to speak with Nancy or other characters. As a whole, this group seems pretty extroverted and talkative, which makes quality time all the more crucial for them in order to feel loved and appreciated. Next, we have physical touch. According to the Five Love Languages website, this language isn't all about the bedroom. A person whose primary language is physical is, not surprisingly, very touchy. Hugs, pats on the back, holding hands, and thoughtful touches on the arm, shoulder, or face, they can all be ways to show excitement, concern, care, and love. Physical presence and accessibility are crucial, while neglect or abuse can be unforgivable and destructive. Physical touch fosters a sense of security and belonging in any relationship. In the Nancy Drew universe, this would translate into characters who actively seek some form of physical touch from other characters, be it a handshake or a hug. This one is much more difficult to spot as it is incredibly rare for two characters to be in the same space at all, let alone seeking physical affection from one another. Still though, I think I found a few, including 
Ryan Kilpatrick from The Deadly Device, Wade Thornton from Ghost of Thornton Hall, Chase Relaford from Trail of the Twister, Kit Foley from Haunting of Castle Malloy, and Maddie Jensen from Stay Tuned for Danger. All of these characters either attempt to establish touch or close proximity, or we see photos of them embracing another character. Ryan and Chase both offer to shake Nancy's hand, something that no other characters in the series do. Wade establishes close body proximity when speaking to others, and Kit and Maddie are both seen in pictures hugging their significant others. And looking at this list, you can't tell me honestly that these characters don't all seem like cuddlers. All five of these characters also are generally quite warm, loving, and friendly. Even if they aren't always warm towards Nancy, each of them has at least one character that they feel particularly close with and loving towards. It makes sense that these characters may prioritize physical touch, as it may aid them in feeling like their love is returned in a concrete way. Next up is acts of service. According to the Five Love Languages website, vacuuming the floors really can be an expression of love. Anything you do to ease the burden of responsibilities weighing on an acts of service person will speak volumes. The words he or she most want to hear are, let me do that for you. Laziness, broken commitments, and making more work for them tell speakers of this language their feelings don't matter. Finding ways to serve speaks volumes to the recipient of these acts. In other words, people with acts of service as their love language are all about action and follow through. I think this love language is probably the most likely to show up in Nancy's universe because there are an awful lot of characters who really appreciate it when Nancy does chores for them. But I'm going to try and focus on those characters for whom it seems particularly important. This includes Dave Gregory from Secret of Shadow Ranch, Professor Hotchkiss from Treasure in the Royal Tower, Nicholas Falcone from The Final Scene, Jeff Akers from Ghost Dogs of Moon Lake, Kyler Malloy from Haunting of Castle Malloy, Niobe Papadaki from Labyrinth of Lies, and Dagny Silva from Sea of Darkness. I try to limit myself to characters that aren't specifically happy with Nancy because she's completing assigned jobs for them, like Joanna Riggs in Secret of the Scarlet Hand or Rose Green in Message in a Haunted Mansion. Rather, all of the characters I listed seem grateful for the actions that Nancy takes to help them, and the majority of them are not obligatory. Dave appreciates Nancy helping him fix the chicken coop. Hotchkiss doesn't trust Nancy until she's run multiple errands for her. Nicholas is impressed by Nancy's ability to track down information about his grandmother. Jeff Akers is genuinely grateful when Nancy organizes his files for him as a way to make amends. Kyler is extra thankful when Nancy does things for her, even though Nancy is already her maid of honor. Niobe is touched when Nancy helps out with making some vases. And Dagny is appreciative of Nancy fixing the heater, and equally ticked off at Magnus when he doesn't hold up his end of the bargain when it came to the Hurlikide. All of these characters are pretty type A, productive, action-oriented characters. They work hard and take pride in their work so it means something extra to them when someone is willing to take something off of their plate and do the work in a way that is still satisfactory. It makes them feel extra loved, appreciated, and supported. Finally, we have words of affirmation, the love language that I am most familiar with since it's my primary one. According to the Five Love Languages website, actions don't always speak louder than words. If this is your love language, unsolicited compliments mean the world to you. Hearing the words, I love you, are important. Hearing the reasons behind that love sends your spirits skyward. Insults can leave you shattered and are not easily forgotten. Kind, encouraging, and positive words are truly life-giving. In the Nancy Drew universe, this can show up in a few different ways. Characters who come across as a bit insecure and actively seek affirmation definitely tend towards this love language, as well as characters who frequently give compliments or are thankful for compliments. I believe that this matches the following characters. Corrine Myers from Warnings at Waverly Academy, Brady Armstrong from The Final Scene, Charlie Murphy from Message in a Haunted Mansion, 
Shorty Thurman from Secret of Shadow Ranch, Heather McKay from Danger by Design, Lily Crew from Tomb of the Lost Queen, Xenia Dukas from Labyrinth of Lies, and Soren Bergerson from Sea of Darkness. All of these characters seek affirmation throughout the games. Kareen perhaps is the most obvious of the characters because she literally says, I'm not so bad, right? Brady is constantly seeking affirmation that he's handsome. Charlie is gutted that everyone keeps saying he's bad at the renovations. Shorty is appalled when his lamb ragu doesn't receive compliments. Heather retaliates against her unappreciative boss. Lily is constantly trying to receive words of affirmation from Abdullah. Xenia speaks often of how she's never felt good enough. And Soren says through the whole game how he's never been told that he belongs. If you've played all the games and know all of these characters, then you can probably see the same trend that I do pretty clearly. All of these characters happen to be examples of characters who aren't receiving enough words of affirmation, and therefore lash out in some way in order to counter the resulting feeling of not being good enough. These are all sensitive characters, and some of them display that sensitivity through a mask of arrogance, while others minimize themselves in an effort to feel better. They all, though, need to hear more often how much they matter and how much they are loved. So there you have it, fellow detectives, the five love languages as explained by Nancy Drew characters. Of course, these are not definitive answers and are only postulations, but I really enjoy examining the idea of different personality assessments through the lens of the Nancy Drew characters, because it really illuminates how excellent the storytelling of these games are. If there is enough information to actually be able to draw some potential conclusions about the personalities of video game characters, then that's a pretty good sign that the writing is top tier. But what do you think, fellow detectives? I'll leave a link to the Five Love Languages quiz in the description box, so you can take the quiz and let me know in the comments what your love language is. Also, do you agree with the characters that I chose for each love language? Do you think some other characters that I didn't mention clearly represent one of the love languages? Let a wizard kitten know in the comments section down below. If you would like to come join a fantastic group of fellow detectives at Mystique Manor as a patron for the channel, gain access to exclusive content, and support the making of more content like this, please check out patreon.com slash wizardkitten. I have also just launched channel memberships, with exclusive badges and emojis to use during streams and in the comment section. If you'd like to support the channel by becoming an official fellow detective, click join next to the subscribe button. And as always, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more Nancy Drew and Sims 4 content. Thank you so much for watching fellow detectives, I will see you soon.